Now on to the Queen and Camilla, look, she's not always been a favourite, but she's played the long game and she has managed to come out as Queen. Uh, there's a great piece in Tatler this week about Camilla's evolution from the most hated woman in England to the nation's grandmother. Tell us about it. Yeah, so it's it's been very interesting observing uh, Queen Camilla's uh you know, rise, should I say. I mean, this was probably one of the most hated women in Britain, particularly with the whole brouhaha between um, Charles and Diana. And then when they got married in 2005, even the sort of the queen, getting the queen's permission was seen as uh, quite a big deal. Um, but actually with, with Kate out of action for, for basically until Easter and, and the king recovering from uh, prostate surgery, we're really seeing um, Queen Camilla shine. She's been at the hospital frequently. We've seen her photograph. She's been holding down the fort. She's going to be taking on um, some of the engagements that King Charles has to take on as well as, uh, you know, Princess Catherine. And she's, she's, she's now really being seen as the glue that's holding the royal family together. I mean, King Charles has been very open about the fact that she's been his support. She's been someone who's really steadied him and, and really helped Helped him focus. Um, she's always, you know, said that King Charles needs to slow down, and he's a bit of a workaholic. And you can see that, that there's a real benefit, not just to, to to the monarch, but to the country, to have them having this mutual support of each other. And uh, you know, the the Queen has had to deal with a lot. I mean, she's had to have a whole kind of PR rebranding um, scheme just to rehabilitate her public image after. Uh, King Charles's acrimonious divorce with, with Princess Diana. Um, but you can see that she's really come out on top. And at the end of the day, she seems more human to most people than sort of what the tabloids painted her as, certainly in the 1990s and the early 2000s. And I think as people of age, as, as the country's grown with, with Queen Camilla, um, they've also grown to understand her and they've underst understood her circumstances and how, you know, life is not perfect, no one is perfect. And sometimes people make mistakes, but they can come back from them. Now, we've spoken numerous times on this show about the family feud, it, and it's generally centred around Meghan and her Ill inability to adjust uh, to life in the palace. A report this week suggests it might not be the case. Yeah, so apparently the, the feud between William and Harry uh, started before even Meghan entered the picture. Apparently there was there were differences between their work ethics and their approaches to various charities, particularly when it came to so their charities in Africa and uh, uh, wildlife preservation. So uh, William preferred a more local community approach where he where local communities were empowered to actually uh, conserve, uh, you know. Uh, animal preservation um, territory and all of that, where uh, Harry wanted to have a more, uh, I suppose, active or forceful approach, um, where he would, you know, force um, external organisations to to meet quotas in terms of preserving wildlife. I mean, he did say in his book Spare um, that he and William got into an argument about Africa and Africa being Williams, as he he quotes him saying. Um, but clearly, they're both quite passionate about wildlife and and their activities in Africa, and they might have a different approach to it. Um, but we we do know that they've, they've obviously had you know skirmishes as siblings do um, before uh, Meghan entered the picture. I think it was just exacerbated uh, by the fact that obviously when when Harry married Meghan and he effectively shoehorned her in, into the institution and um, didn't really give give her time or give them time for a role to develop or a place for them to develop organically in the royal family that just heightened tension uh, tensions between the brothers. And now we obviously know that's nothing compared to everything that's happened since the. The release of the book Spare, and I, like I said, I, I do believe that the current situation is going to calcify. I don't think there's really any coming back for at least the brothers at this point, and it will be a bit awkward um, when King Charles eventually does pass away and the, the crown passes to to King William for him to have, you know, an acrimonious relationship with his own brother. That's not going to to, to bode very well. But sometimes these things happen, and you can't really blame anyone, other than Harry. You can blame Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Esther Cracky, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for joining us tonight.